name's Noelle and thank you for clicking on my video. Um, I realized after making this video that my intro and outro were kind of like were not that great and so I thought I would just, um, I'm editing the video and I thought I would just like do a better in um, intro. So um, this video is dedicated to a dear friend who recently passed away and she um, like I had found out the day before making this video that she had passed away, so this was kind of my therapeutic way of grieving, grieving her loss. She was someone who um, was a little bit of like a mentor with, um, she helped me, helped me with my very first art market and she was a framer and so she um, invited me into her framing studio and we did sort of um, um, a trade. So I gave her some artwork and then she let me use her map boards and she taught me a lot about framing and her name was Kathy and I like, I really do miss her so much. And um, so this video is dedicated to her. I thought about her so many times while making it. Um, so in this video, I am framing two of my original oil paintings with vintage thrifted frames. So um, yeah, I just kind of showed the step-by-step -step process, so I hope you enjoy, and yeah, thank you for being here again, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button before I forget. Okay. So here's the first frame I got. Um, I really liked the design of the molding, it just felt like really good quality, and I'm going to be putting this warrior princess in it. I think it was only $15, and here's the other one that was $10. And it just felt like it was really well made. And um, I'm going to be putting my painting beautifully hidden in that one. Um, so when I picked up the frame, I'm always aware of like how the stretched canvas sometimes has some volume around the edges and it's not like a perfect measurement. So when you bring your measuring tape to the store and want to pick out a frame, you gotta kind of keep in mind there has to be a tiny bit of give around the edges because if it's too tight it could like and you force the painting in the frame it could damage it and um, this is an example of one that the frame was too tight and I actually figured it out by sanding down the edges of the frame and then making the, so the painting can go in it better but it still wasn't perfect you could still see it kind of is like not fully in the frame um, but that was just, you know, it worked out. So yeah, I just took off the backing and then I'm going to have to remove these wire, um, these little hooks, nails, nail gun nails. <laughs> there we go. Just with a simple flathead screwdriver and pliers does the trick. This one, the wood was, it was kind of, um, like harder wood so it was tougher to get the nails out and the nails were a bit thicker and um, one little trick I have is if the nails don't if they break when you're trying to take them out you can get your pliers and do a little twisty motion and it is nice and easy to come out here's the other one I noticed that it was done by most likely a professional framer because he put his little sticker on it um, it's always nice to get some high quality frames, so that's a little indicator that could mean it's like a nice quality frame. And, um, they, you know, if they're going to put their name on it, there's a level of pride in, in their work. These uh, nail gun nails were a lot easier to get out. Um, I did have one flick up um, onto my desk, thankfully, but you gotta keep track of them and maybe wear eyeglasses or, you know, protective gloves. Just use your precautions. I was just kind of being a little bit on the risky side today. And um, so before um, throwing away the innards of the frame, I wanna make sure it's not an original painting. So. I want to, you know, I double check that it's not an original. You can kind of tell if there's any sort of texture, like you can tell the human touch over a printer. So thankfully, neither of these were originals. If they were originals, I would have at least donate, donated them back um, and not thrown them away. But it was a very beautiful picture, both of them. And then we have the, the hanging wire I need to remove as well, because it's kind of in the way. And... Uh, have some glue here that isn't a big deal, so I'm just going to leave it there. I 
kind of a fun part to get off all these little nails. They must have just ran out of the little hanging hooks, um, the proper ones. One side was regular and then this side was like full of staple guns. <laughs> staple guns, staples. And then obviously be very careful with the glass. Um, I haven't had too many instances, but my husband actually, I had him remove the glass. I wanted him to break it and dispose of it. And he actually cut his hand and it was really sad. And um, I, yeah, I was kind of like upset about that because it just looked really painful and it was a bummer, you know. So I'm so excited to finally test the picture and see if it fits in the frame. Um, I'm going to be placing the picture upward so that um, it doesn't go directly onto the ground, you know, surface of the painting on the ground, maybe not my favorite. Um, and thankfully it fit amazingly and like I mentioned before it didn't have that problem of the frame being too tight and scra scratching the edges. You want to have like that little bit of space there. So next I'm just going to clean the frames from any dust, debris, oils, um, any of that can make it so the paint doesn't um, stick as well because I'm going to be painting these guys and dry them off. Um, I did kind of sand them down a tiny bit to get that top level sheen off of it. I thought that would also help with the paint um, taking it. Um, so I have this spackle here that I'm going to be filling in the cracks of uh, the, the frame, the, the molding joints, the corners, and any little imperfections. I got my gloves and spackle knife that it is good to wear gloves and take safety precautions, but as you can tell, these gloves are way too big, so I actually ended up taking them off uh, and just using my hand, because look, it's like really difficult to work with it. Um, and yeah, so it probably isn't the best to not use gloves. And in the corners, I was just gonna kind of reform the corners since they were sort of damaged, and I had my spackle knife, and the spackle knife didn't work as well as I would have liked it to, but it was a nice try and everything. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm just filling in those little um, crevices and just getting it all nice and good. And as you can see, I took off my glove. Kind of a satisfying part. But beware, so like I was placing my frame down on the ground and then it would like damage the corner that I had just done. So just be careful about how you, you know, your workspace and all of that, making sure you don't waste time like I did. So I have like a really um, kind of thick brushled, bristled uh, fan brush here that I thought would be nice to like sort of sweep off the little speckles that were in the wrong spot that I don't want to, don't want them to be there. So, it worked pretty good. Probably could be better. Yeah, and then just doing some more touch-ups. Finally, to the painting spot, um, I have some some semi-gloss white paint, uh, spray paint that I normally don't use spray paint, but I thought it would be nice to just just do that so that it's more of a smooth finish versus like with a painter. Um, paintbrush and paint it just kind of you can see the paint stroke sometimes and I just thought that wouldn't be as aesthetic so um, I'm not super familiar with using spray paint but it actually worked really well <laughs> this part you can see like a little speckle I just spray painted over I must not have noticed it um, hopefully I went back and like got rid of that little speckle yeah, very satisfying doing this. I feel like the white just makes it look so much cleaner and more modern and I feel like it definitely goes with my brand more. And these other frames there was nothing like wrong with them. I mean, I mean they're beautiful and stuff, but I just think that to have my art shine, like I want it to just be have like a simple frame. Nothing distracting and a lot of my work has white in it. So I thought white would be a good universal color all around the board for my work. So here I have the paintings and I actually haven't put my name on the back. So I'm actually going to go ahead and write my name and then title of the painting on the back. I have this 
fine tip sharpie marker which I think it was getting a little bit low on ink so it was kind of difficult to write you'll find that like writing the names on canvas is not the most fun <laughs> overall I'm not into calligraphy or writing on my artwork or anything like I'm not a big writer <laughs> my hand my penmanship could be better <laughs> but had to get that done because it always want to have your work on your uh, your name on your art because you want to know later like when you made a piece and I've had that so many times where I didn't do it and so definitely do that so yeah um, I just wanted to let these dry for a good 24 hours or more these are my little kitties that live on well they're not mine but they actually think they live on my patio they're super cute if anyone wants to adopt them but yeah I was gonna let these sit I did bring them in the house after like an hour or two laid them out on the in a floor in the room in a room to let them dry fully so you know over the night nothing like got stuck on them or something outside yeah I just love how it came out I did a couple layers here I'm fine I'm looking at the finished dried result and it um I think they look so cute the only issue is I did notice there's a few imperfections you'll notice the corner I think I'm gonna yeah so like the corner of one of the frames the molding wasn't um, the joints weren't connected strongly enough so they kind of like uh, buckle a little and the little line um, comes back up so that wasn't something even though I filled it in with a spackle like it wasn't something I could totally fix and then over here there was like little like wood texture so I thought I would go in with like sandpaper and just go ahead and try to smooth out that wood texture because I thought it would make it look a little bit better So I have this white paint um, and also part of the paint didn't fully cover so like especially around the edges I just I had this white paint and I wanted to double I wanted to double check that it actually it might match instead of like having to go out and spray paint them again um, I was kind of looking at the final results results I'm a little bit of a little bit of a perfectionist so yeah and here I have a super fine grain sandpaper it was used before but it's not a big deal because it still has some life in it it's kind of holding it like a rounded rounded direction um, I'm gonna get down get off some of that wood grain uh, stuff that was there um, and instead of like fully like having any sharp edges on the sandpaper it's good to kind of have it rounded so that it didn't you know have more sanding off in certain parts where the sharp edges were of the paper if that makes sense and also I didn't want to sand too much so I had a really fine grain so that it didn't like actually take off the paint or take too much of it just kind of trying to work out these corners again I'm trying a different kind of spackle to fill in those corners again to see if I'm able to um, redeem that a little bit <laughs> this is Chibi, our cat. He's a very good boy. So I think I'm just going to let that dry uh, before covering it, um, trying to repaint it with that paint. I'm also going to test out the paint color to make sure it's a decent match. So here, here I have that just a regular acrylic white paint that I use in my studio and I wanted to just do a color match on sort of a discrete side. You'll notice this is one of the parts that didn't fully spray paint color while on it. So I'm just, and you can notice it looks a little bit brighter. Well, paint actually dries darker. So I'll need to let that dry to, to see if it actually matches.
here I have it um, nice and dried and it looks great really excited that it actually matched and then I went ahead and did the corners as well and now they're looking very spiffy it looks like I put the map board picture back in the frame but actually I did not that just I just I placed it there and then um, when I'm picking out my frames I just thought I would also mention that I like to get frames that don't have a large lip to them so that it's not covering the artwork um, ideally like if a floater frames are the best where the artwork isn't ha doesn't have any coverage and the edges can edges and corners can breathe and not not get damaged at all and so I put in beautifully hidden in the frame and normally I would like use one of these attaching hardware pieces um, that's like the maybe the proper way to do it but I don't want to do that because it's gonna like put a hole through the canvas um, of my actual artwork and I just feel like that would damage the integrity of the material and so I just finagled away I got some acid-free uh, like a thin cardboard like mailer and so instead I'm I'm able to use this and screw it onto the wood of the the bars rather than the actual like through the canvas and then you'll notice that this painting actually the the frame um, the canvas bar frames is a little bit buckled so I was able to do I was able to like screw down the corners that were raised it was very satisfying because finally have it in it. It looks so beautiful and I'm really happy with how it all came together for this piece. Um, I'm not fully done but I'm able to kind of see what it's going to look like. Um, so the next part is the most fun. I have my double-sided scotch tape and I just go around the edges with this tape and for sealing the back. I've tried different um, kinds of like sealer um, tape stuff uh, and this is the best one I found so far. People can use glue, there's like this little roller that you can use to tack down the paper. So I have uh, just this regular um, paper I got from the craft store, it's kind of thin and acid free and it is kind of a bit of a a very large piece of paper so I probably could have gotten a smaller one but this is the one I found for the best deal I like to tack down first the corners um, so I'm doing opposite side corners first and then kind of making it look aesthetic so um, as soon as the the paper touches the tape it's gonna like a attach basically so you want to kind of be really gentle and tedious about how you're putting down the paper and um, and how you join those corners because they can kind of like crinkle or bend and attach in the wrong way so I try to be really careful and then I do the corners and then I do the, the edges and I cut this paper around the edges and it's gonna look finally getting to the absolute funnest I know that's not really a word but it's the most fun part I'm just kind of making sure it's nice and flushed down and uh, those edges are pretty defined so that I'm gonna be able to cut around the edges um, there is like a few little techniques that I found that work well with doing this part I I used to think like starting on the corners would be good but actually I found that ending on a corner is better so that it doesn't like catch because I found that a lot of times if the razor blade isn't sharp enough or if you do the wrong um, like placement so 
so yeah like as you're using the razor you kind of can like go up and down the edge and try to get the, the right angle um, and it will come out nice and clean but it just does take a little bit of practice the biggest trick is just having a sharp razor though you could do little sawing motions but look at that it's so nice and clean It's almost done. It still needs the wire backings. But I ran out of um, the little screws. I needed to save some of those for the next painting. I wasn't sure if I could find some somewhere or what, but... Yeah, I love how it came out. the second painting um, I'm going to show this one in a little bit less depth because I showed the first one in more depth and I just this video is getting kind of long so what I'm going to do with this one is since the painting is smaller than the frame size um, I'm going to recycle the mat board that the frame came with and attach the painting to the mat board so it kind of does like give it like a floater frame aesthetic. This isn't really a long-term solution because the map board can get dirty. Normally it's behind glass, but if you're attaching the painting to the map board, it's not going to it's going to be vulnerable to long-term, you know, damage. Uh, so, but I just found this trick is kind of useful for just a temporary display. So, I have I'm getting these paintings ready for a show that is in a few days. And I just wanted to do something that looked nice and presentable, but doesn't need to be like perfect, I guess. But yeah, measuring and putting this painting in, centering it was actually quite a difficult task. And I had to run out of screws, so I just went to the store and had to find ones that were exactly what I needed. And you'd be surprised, there's like, it's really hard to find the right ones with all of the screws. Um, I'm sure I'll get more familiar the more I go there, but Home Depot's great. I love shopping there. It was only like $1.50 for a pack of 16, which I think will last me a little while. Thank you, Home Depot. Again, I'm trying to attach these screws to the actual wood of the painting rather than through the canvas because I don't want to, again, inflict damage on the actual integrity of the painting um, around those edges. A moment of truth here. Isn't that satisfying? Look, it's like nice and perfectly flush to the... So I'm able to just easily tape it. And again, you know, tape. It does, the it does the trick, so it should be fine. And then, doing this part. It's actually a lot of work to get these, these two pictures framed. But I had so much fun doing it. I thought about Kathy so many times because she's taught me so many things about framing and stuff. I like using the wire that has the plastic on it rather than just like the wire without plastic um, because it's just way easier to work with and it is not as pokey. The one with just the wire is like awful to twist and poke yourself so it's more just nicer, nicer quality. of truth. I'm going to be putting my picture on the wall to see how it hangs. And I think it looks beautiful. So nice. I feel like you guys did this with me. And I have my other one. Excuse my horrible lighting here. I 
it looks lovely, look at that. This has been so delightful. I love how it came out and I feel like, like you guys have done this with me and it's been really nice to have you join me. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. This is so much fun to have you here and I hope you enjoyed and um, and yeah, if you enjoyed it, please uh, click the like button and subscribe again, and I hope to see you in future videos. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of them on the table. I haven't been the best at posting lately, but I'm going to try to get better, and um, yeah. So I have a day in the life video I'm working on, and I always have like time lapse videos of like paintings I'm making, but yeah, so I'd love to have you along. Anyway, thank you so much. Bye.